countdown for blast off. X minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, X minus one. Fire! From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents X minus one. Tonight's story, Mars is Heaven. When the first space rocket lands on Mars, what will we find? Only the ruins of a dead and deserted planet? Or will there be life, intelligent life, in some strange form that we can only imagine? Will we be welcomed with open arms? Or will the Martians treat us as invaders? Only one thing is certain. Someday, a giant metal ship will take off from Earth to travel through the black velocities, the silent gulfs of space, to descend at last into the darkness of the upper Martian atmospheres. And on that day, man will finally know the answers. The day we first land on Mars. Now hear this, now hear this. Approaching critical deceleration. Fasten gravity suits. Stand by to land. There it is. We've intersected the course vector, sir. All right, Mr. Lustig. Over to manual control. Aye, sir. Masters, sound general quarters. Aye, sir. Mr. Lustig. What do you make of the terrain? There seems to be a heavy ground, Miss Captain. We won't be able to use the infrared lights. And we'll have to come in on radar. Isn't that a little risky, sir? Landing in the dark? I'd rather run the danger of a blind landing, Lieutenant, than come in without the cover of darkness. Remember, we don't know what kind of reception is waiting for us down there. Airspeed 500. Altitude now 4,000. Bridge to engine room. Stand by for deceleration. Fire forward tubes one and three. Here she goes, Mr. Lustig. There she goes, sir. Airspeed 100. Altitude 1,000. Radar indicates a level stretch dead ahead, sir. Skids down. Skids check. Altitude 500. Four. 350. Three. Up a point now. All right. Let's set her down. the power. Masters, pipe battle stations. I said. All secured, sir. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, we're now on Mars, April 20th, 1987, 433 Greenwich time. Enter that in the log, masters. I said. Well, gentlemen, it's less than two hours till dawn. As soon as it's light, we'll send out a landing party. Masters, get me an all-over hookup. We're all set, Captain. Now hear this. All right, men. The smoking lamp is lit. Well, we're on Mars. The first man shipped from Earth to land here. We don't know what we're going to find or what dangers we may face. We're 17 men on an alien world. And it's up to us whether we ever get home again. The next few hours should tell the story. 
And I want instant obedience to all commands. I'll court-martial the first man who doesn't jump to when he's ordered. And one other thing. We may be on Mars, but this is still a United States naval vessel. Officers will conduct a personal and weapons inspection in one hour. That's all. An inspection, Captain? Now? Mr. Lustig, we've got an hour and a half to sweat out before we find out what's outside that airlock. I'd rather have a man worried about his stripes than about what's waiting outside on Mars. Now I hear this. Landing party report to forward airlock. Captain Black, Lieutenant Hingston, Lieutenant Lustig, and Dr. Horst report immediately to forward airlock. It's now landing time, minus five. Well, they're paging us. Uh, you ready, Dr. Horst? Yes, Mr. Lustig. As ready as I will ever be. Come on, let's get in the lock. Hingston, Lustig, and Horst reporting in the airlock. Very well, sir. The captain will join you. Four minutes to go. At least the captain would get here. What difference does it make? I just want to get it over with, that's all. Anybody got a cigarette? Yeah, I think you're smoking too much, Lieutenant Lustig. Are you nervous? I are for you, Horst. Wondering what's hidden outside underneath that ground mist? I've been giving it some thought. It'll be very interesting to find out. A very unusual planet, Mars. Why? It has an atmosphere. A wonderful thing, an atmosphere. Where you find one, you uh, find life. You mean Martians? What do you think they'll look like? Who knows? Intelligent life can take many forms. You mean they may have green skins and eyes on stalks or something? <laughs> the comic book conception is possible, of course. Or they may have developed far beyond us. Perhaps they have a science that can produce weapons far more dangerous than our atomic missiles. You think we may have to fight our way up? After all, we are invaders. Now I hear this landing time minus two. All right, all right, we heard this. You know what I'd like to find outside that airlock? Good old Illinois. Ever been there, Lustig? Uh, only Chicago. Well, you ought to see my hometown. Green lawns, big white houses. <laughs> Sounds like my hometown. My grandmother used to have one of those iron deer on the lawn. Every Halloween, we'd paint it another color. One time, we painted it black and white like a Holstein cow. Where does your family live, Dr. Horst? I have no family. When I was a child, they were gassed to death in the Dachau concentration camp. Oh, tough. No, oh, it has its advantages. I have no ties on Earth. Nothing to lose now. I imagine I'm the only one on board who is free to enjoy our present peculiar position. All right, masters, you can button it up now. I see. Well, gentlemen, check your sidearms. In one minute, we'll be the first men to set foot on Mars. Quite an honor, eh? As long as the medals are not rewarded posthumously. Still uneasy, Dr. Horst? Captain Black, I've been uneasy ever since I can remember. On Earth and on Mars. Well... 30 seconds. Give me the intercom phone, Lustig. Yes, sir. Masters. Aye, sir. Battle stations are to be manned till we return. If we're not back in two hours, I want no rescue party sent out. Blast off and save the ship, you understand? Aye, sir. All right. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Lustig, open the outer airlock. Aye, sir. Fresh air. Let's go. All right, now, take it easy. It's too dark to move fast. Quiet, isn't it? Not even a wind. Can't see anything from this ground this time. We don't know what's out here. All right, come on. What the... Quiet. Captain, I can swear that... That sounds like a rooster. I don't hear it anymore. Very homely but unlikely sound. A rooster crowing on Mars? Hingston. Aye, sir. Set that machine gun 25 yards to the flank. We'll stay here till the ground mist lifts. Aye, sir. What do you make of the ground, horse? Grass. 
Plain grass. You can see some large foliage there where the mist's thinned out. What the... Hastings, hold your fire, you fool! I hit it, Captain! What? Some kind of wild animal. I hit it. I could see the tracers, but it's still standing. Come on, Horst. Doctor, where are you? Up ahead. Admiring the wild animal. Careful, Horst. Wait for us. Don't worry, Captain. <laughs> it's an iron deer. A lawn ornament. Well, that... That's impossible. It's hollow. Interesting, isn't it? A whitewashed Victorian iron deer sitting on a lawn in the middle of Mars. I don't understand. Look around. The mist's lifting. Hey, Captain, look there. It's a house. A regular old-fashioned house. But, sir, on Mars... Good Lord. I haven't seen carved scrolls and gingerbread like that in years. Look at that port swing. The geraniums. There. I told you it was a rooster, Captain. Give me the glasses, Lustig. I want to take a look through that front window. Well, there's an upright piano. Some sheet music on it. Plastic, it's... It's beautiful Ohio. Oh, it can't be, sir. Horst. Horst, do you think that civilization of two planets could be identical? I don't know. That specific variety of geraniums is only 50 years old on Earth. Is it logical that they should develop in Mars? How about that porch swing and the piano and, and beautiful Ohio? Why, it's impossible. Captain Black... This looks like the town I was born in. Well, it, it looks like my hometown, too. I thought of something, sir. It's the only solution. Maybe maybe we're not the first ship to reach Mars from Earth. Don't be ridiculous, Lester. Oh, how else can you explain it? Suppose some scientists got together. They, they, they invented some spaceship and, and planted a colony here. That's the only answer. That's impossible, Lester. Been space travel, it couldn't be secret. Do you have any idea what ships cost, what industrial power is needed? No, there's got to be some logical reason. I think perhaps we might find out, Captain. The light just went on in that house. Kingston, cover that door with the machine gun. I see. All right. Come on, horse. We're going to ring that doorbell. There's got to be a scientific answer to all this. And there's something moving in there. Stand back, Horst. Give me a clear shot. Are you sure a bullet can stop a Martian? Steady now. Can I help you? I... Well, we... If you're selling anything, it's much too early. No, 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 wait just a minute. What what town is this? What do you mean? Are you census takers? No, no. We're strangers here. We want to know how this town got here. Is this a game? No, no, it's not a game. We're from Earth. From where? From Earth. Do you mean out of the ground? Are you sure you're feeling well? Madam, we came in a flying ship across space. We're from the third planet, Earth. This is Mars. Now do you understand Mars? You go away now, you hear? I'll call my husband from upstairs and he'll chase you. Go on. But this is Mars, isn't it? This is Green Lake, Wisconsin in the United States of America. Bounded on the east by the Atlantic and on the west by the Pacific. Now go away. Goodbye. Horst, do you suppose it's really possible? I've got to find out more about this. I call my husband. Now you go away. You've got to tell me one thing first. What year is this? Year? 1928, of course. For goodness sake. You hear that, Horst? And we know it's 1987. And we know this is Mars. Of course, is it possible that we got fouled up, made, made some tremendous blunder, circled around and landed back on Earth? In 1928? Well, maybe some switch in time or dimension. Could we have shifted somehow, gone, gone backward in time? Oh, Horst, it, this won't hold water. It's... It's not logical. We've, we, we checked every mile. We went past the moon, out into space. We're, we're on Mars. Lustig out at point. Hingston in the rear. Keep that gun at half load. I said... Horst, there, there's got to be some cold, logical solution. Captain! What? That, that, that house down the street, the white one with the green shutters. Lustig, what's the matter? I never thought of... I never thought of... Thank God! Lustig! Lustig, come back here! He's running for that house. That crazy fool after him, quick! Lustig, stop! Come down off of that porch! Stand up! What the devil do you think you're doing? Albert! Oh, Grandma! And Grandpa, it is you. Lustig, what is going on here? Albert, it's, it's been so many years. How you've grown, boy. It's so good to see you. Lieutenant Lustig! Oh, Captain, uh, Grandma, I want you to meet my friends. This is Captain Black. Captain, I want you to meet my grandfather. Howdy. Any friend of Albert's is a friend of ours. <laughs> How long have you been here, Grandma? Oh, a good many years. Ever since we died. Ever since you what? Oh, yes, sir. They've been dead 30 years. What? Oh, now, don't you trouble yourself. It's all right. We're alive again, that's all. Do you mean to tell me that Mars is heaven? Oh, nonsense, no. All we know is here we're alive again. 
And who are we to question God's infinite ways? Well, I... Lustig, we're going back to the ship. But, Captain, I, I want to talk to my grandpa. Lieutenant Lustig, I don't like any part of this. You'll come back with us if I have to club you and carry you. I see. Now, let's go. Heaven only knows what they've run up against back at the ship. <laughs> The ship. Looks like we're being welcomed with a celebration, Captain. Celebration! We've abandoned ship. Every port is open. No guard set. You! You, masters! Hiya, Captain. Meet my old dad. Dad, that's Captain Black. He's not a bad guy for an officer. Up on Hingston! Uh, uh, what's it? Bring that band back. Use force if you have to. I, uh, oh, excuse me, sir. That's my Uncle George. Hingston! I'll be right back, Captain. Uncle George! Uncle George. What the devil is Don't going on here? understand, sir. They've all found friends and relatives. They're all here! You're right, Captain. I found it. The whole crew is out in the crowd. But I gave orders. Captain in order. You don't understand, Captain. I understand mutiny. I don't care how many relatives show up. I'll have discipline. Johnny! Johnny! What? Johnny, you old son of a gun. It's you. Edward. Yes. It can't be. Oh, of course it is. Johnny. Johnny, Ed. you old... <laughs> Ed, what? Dr. Horst, this is my brother, Edward. How do you do? Hello, sir. It's wonderful to, to see you, Edward. <laughs> Look, I've... I've got to get back to my ship. Oh, Johnny, wait. I almost forgot. Mom's waiting at home. Mom? Yeah, and Dad, too. Mom and Dad are alive? Then... Then you're real, Ed. Well, of course. Don't I feel real? <laughs> How's that, huh? <laughs> Why, Ed! Ed! <laughs> we've, we've got lunch for you, Johnny. Mom's making corn fritters. Dr. Horst, haven't you found anybody? No, no, Captain. I have nobody. Well, then you come on home with me, right, Ed? Why, sure. Horst, Horst, you wouldn't believe it. But it's been 35 years since I had Mom's corn fritters. <laughs> By George, 35 years. So don't hold back, Johnny. You too, Dr. Horace. Well, Johnny, you're still in the Navy, eh? Huh? That's right, Dad. I'm in command of the ship. We're an old Navy family, Dr. Horace. All three of our boys in the service. Yeah, Ed was the best pilot in the Pacific, too. What did happen, Ed? <laughs> What's the difference? I'm here now. Yeah, but... You know, it's almost perfect. All we're missing is your brother, Will. Then the whole family could be together. Well, it won't be long, Mom. Will's in charge of the XR-54. Next rocket coming out to Mars. Oh. Well, little Will, when does he leave, Johnny? Well, the takeoff's scheduled for September, but uh -huh. it depends on what we report. Oh, oh, yeah. There's no question about that now, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Christmas together again. That'll be something. Sure yes. will, yes, sirree. Well, uh, this calls for a celebration. How about a little of the old dandelion wine, eh, Johnny? Now, Father, don't you go giving Johnny too much wine. <laughs> He's a big boy now, Mother. Well, sir, isn't everything just fine? Just fine. Again, will you, Ed? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Horst, what are you doing sitting over here alone? What do you think of my little family? Very nice. You know, I can't understand why you didn't find any folks here, Dr. Horst. It's just a shame everybody else is so happy. Well, I never remembered my family, Mrs. Black. All I know is they were gassed at Dachau during the Second World War. When I was liberated, I was in delirium three months. I cannot remember anything before then. A psychiatric phenomena. Well, that's terrible. Isn't there anything anybody can do? I don't want to remember. I have not had a pleasant life. I prefer to be free of emotional entanglements. They interfere with a scientific approach. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Oh. Horst. What? Oh, I'll get it. That's our ring. Long and three shorts. I remember that. Well, maybe we'd better call it a night. You must be getting tired, Johnny. I'd better be going back to the ship. Nonsense. You stay the night. Uh, we insist. I just couldn't rest thinking of you all alone on that ship. Oh, I'll be all right. Well, 
Good night. Oh, wait a minute, Dr. Horst. That phone message was for you. Me? Yes, that's right. Uh, a message from Anna. Anna? I don't... Well, there, she must be an old friend. Isn't that nice? Uh, I don't... You sure it was for me? I don't remember any Anna. Well, she asked if you were better. Perhaps she's someone who knew you at Dachau. Anna? She said she's coming over here first thing in the morning. So you have to stay over. Yes, well, but... that uh... settles it, then. You stay here, Horst. You can bunk with me in my old room. Yeah, but, Johnny, we thought you'd like to be with Edward. So you could talk the way you're used to. Well, we can't put Dr. Horst on the day bed. I think we'd better share the room tonight. Be plenty of time for talking, Ed. <laughs> yes, I, I guess so. Well, I suppose I'd better drop back to the ship. You know, Ed, security check. What, why do you have to do that here? I, I don't know, Mom. There's no good reason, I guess. <laughs> well, suppose we skip it tonight, huh? Well, good night, everybody. Oh, it's good to have you home, Johnny. It's good to be home, Mom. Captain Black, hmm? You asleep? No, no, I've... I've been thinking about what we were expecting. <laughs> Green-skinned Martians. All the time there was only Mom and Dad and, and Edward waiting. Now, it's funny what tricks your imagination can play on you. Well, I guess Mars is heaven, Horst. You know, I've been thinking about Martians, too. Hmm? Captain, just suppose... Suppose there were Martians, no. and they saw us land. And suppose they thought of us as invaders. What would be the best weapon they could use against our atom bombs, huh? Oh, I don't see what you're getting at. They would want to disarm us first, huh? To wipe out all suspicion, to make us feel at home. Captain, mm. suppose this house isn't real. Suppose the people are just images stolen from our own memories by Martians, created for us by telepathy, hypnotism. Oh, that's, that's the craziest theory I ever heard. Maybe that's why there was no one for me, because in all my life there is no happy memory, no real loved person, not even my mother. I don't remember her. Only the piles of rotting corpses of Dachau. There was no happy emotion for these people to recreate. How about that phone call? Anna? Yes, Anna. I didn't remember who she was, but I do now. I just remembered. When I was freed from Dachau, sick, delirious, I raved about a wonderful, kind nurse named Anna that took care well, of me. Well, there you are. It's logical. She's coming to see you tomorrow. But there was no Anna. I'd been nursed by a man. What? Anna was only a dream. And there's only one way they could have learned about her, by reading my subconscious mind. That's impossible, Horace. Why? A whole crew was thinking of home. Suppose the Martians read our minds. Yes, but if, if there are Martians... If there are, they have us separated. Each man in a different house, sleeping. Trusting. No one at the guns. I left my pistol downstairs. Do you think there's something to this, Horst? It's a perfect trap, Captain. Who would suspect his own mother? His grandparents? How easy. Just a knife in the heart of each sleeping man. That's impossible, Horst. But... We've, we've got to get back to the ship. Listen. The crickets have stopped. Come on. We don't know when they change back to whatever they really are. All right, careful. Where are you going, John? Ed. We, uh, we wanted a drink of water. That, that's all, Ed. You're not thirsty, John. You don't want a drink. Look out! You don't want a His drink. His face! It's changing! He's a marsh! Run, horse! Run! You can't get away, John! This way, horse! Horse! Where are you? Ah! Hello! Hello! Can you hear me, Earth? This, this is Captain John Black, the XR-53 calling for Mars. I've locked myself in the ship, but they've crippled it. I can't take off or fire the guns, and they're coming for me now, the Martians. I'm all alone here. All the rest are dead. Hingston, Lustig, Dr. Horst. Poor Horst, he didn't even reach the door. Listen, listen. They're trying to break through the hull. 
Edward and Mom and Dad and all the folks. But, but they're changing now. They're, they're melting and changing back into... They're Martians. Can you understand? Martians, not men. They, they made us think that Mars was heaven and we fell into the trap. Can you hear me, Earth? You've got to stop the next rocket. Listen, tell my brother Will. Tell my brother not to come. They'll trap him, too. They'll kill them all. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me, Earth? This is John Black on Mars. Hello, Earth? This is John Black on Mars. Hello, Earth. Hello, Earth. Tonight, X-1 has brought you the science fiction classic, Mars is Heaven. Written by Ray Bradbury and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were Wendell Holmes as Captain Black and Peter Capel as Dr. Horst. With Bill Zuckert as Masters, Bill Lipton as Hingston, Margaret Berlin as the old lady, Bill Griffiths as Edward, Ken Williams as Lustig, Ethel Everett as Mom, and Edwin Jerome as Dad. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Fred Wayne as a transcribed NBC Radio Network production. Minus, 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 minus one. 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 one.